Oh, I just realized. Well, two things. One thing I was going to say to you is, do you know that it's, it's interesting to me that when people do these Facebook live type things and then put it onto YouTube, that they sit around quietly sort of staring at themselves for a long time until they actually talk, which makes for the worst YouTube video ever. But I just realized, you know, if I do this right, what I could do is I could talk to YouTube people first for like a minute or more and no one would even know who came and saw it on Facebook Live. It's like you get a bonus. So yo, what up my YouTube folks? No, I'm just pretending. <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to talk about, uh, I, I want to say the words personal branding, but oh, I hate those words. So I got beat up for it in the old days. So I think I kind of shy away from it. Oh my gosh, I used to get in these arguments with people that the term personal branding was stupid and all that sort of a thing. But you know, I don't, I don't have a better set of words for it. Like I don't, I don't know a, a better way to kind of point on that. But I, I, I guess what I was going to say was, uh, all right, let's, let's talk about how certain uh, people and or brands are approaching the beautiful apocalypse. I think that on the one hand, it is good that we are figuring out how we're going to represent ourselves at a distance. I think on the other hand, there are a lot of ways to make some misses and a lot of ways to make some hits. Um, I think I complained about this the other day, so I'll only re-complain about it briefly. Uh, Wells Fargo sends all their um, call center people back to work and says, you know, hey, we're a bank, so you've got to come back to work. And, you know, that's just how it's got to be. And it's not a good look. And they didn't put their senior team in with the call center employees. So what they're also saying is we're so willing to sacrifice our front line, even though, uh, you know, our senior team isn't here to support that. It's a bad look. On the other hand, there's companies like The Gap who are making all kinds of masks and um, helping out with the, the hospital challenge going on right now, which is such an embarrassment to this nation that we don't have enough medical supplies for our hospital staff. That's, we should feel the most shame about the fact that we can't keep our caregivers uh, in, in good stead. But I guess we should feel that about schools too, right? Look at what teachers had to suddenly learn to become remote instructors, even though remote training and education technology has been in existence for nearly 20 years or more, right? But anyway, I, I griped about that the other day. But what I'm thinking about is what, you know, what makes it a bad look? What makes it a good look? Look at how Gap looks really good for doing the sewing thing. Uh, look at how Popeye's chicken looks bad for you know, kind of making super light of the quarantine, even though thousands of people have died. Maybe not a good look, right? So... I was thinking about what goes into this, like what goes into how do we express ourselves? How do we represent ourselves? Uh, part of it came from, I just watched an interview. Um, there's a there's a rapper, his name is Dave Bird. He goes by Lil Dicky and he was on Trevor Noah's show. And he's a, if you've never seen Lil Dicky, um, he's very personable, very friendly, uh, very easygoing, a very caring kind of a person. And the way he carries himself makes you really want to be around him. He's a, he's a very personable kind of guy. He's also super self-deprecating. I mean, understand that this guy's rap name uh, alludes to having a smaller penis. Um, that's pretty self-deprecating. And, you know, he says it as his, you know, part of his joke and all that. But he also says, you know, it's just, it's just, it's so funny compared to all the swagger out there. And I was thinking about someone, I watched someone promote something that he was making to sort of be helpful, try to be helpful, acting like he, you know, was helpful. And it was so self-promotional. It was so, it was, you know, they call this uh, virtual signaling where you're, you're doing something, but you're doing it. So people see you do it and like, look at me being good for the people. Um, and I, I was so turned off by it. And even, you know, the graphics that came along with it, I was like, really like, ah, oh. And it comes from two places. People, people who need that, they have such low self-esteem. They have such a low uh, opinion of themselves. And they're trying to bank on other people to push up their self-opinion. And, you know, there's a reason it's called a self-opinion. You know, you, you think it about yourself. And so it's not going to ever work. Like, it's, it's a hole you can't fill. And I at once was so grumpy with this person, but I was also sort of pitying them. And then I was thinking, I wonder if anyone ever taught how to represent yourself in a better way, how, how to maybe uh, conduct yourself in a way that would be a lot more personable and probably not. And, and I wonder in general, do we know what makes us gravitate towards someone? 
And it's funny because if we watch the, uh, movies and shows like we do and we, we look at who is the sort of hero, there's basically kind of two sorts of heroes. And there's there's ones that are uh, slightly arrogant and still followable, like uh, Tony uh, Stark from Iron Man, from the Iron Man movies. Tony Stark is, is, is supremely likable because he's quippy and funny and all that sort of a thing. Um, and he sort of plays to our fantasy of someone that we know we're not quite, right? And on the other hand, there's leaders who just sort of have that sense about them the whole time of, you know, oh, I'm not so sure I'm going to make it work. You know, uh, Spider-Man, good example, right? Um, Peter Parker, I mean, he's, he's always worried that he's not enough or that he doesn't have it figured out or um, that, that, you know, he's, he's just not up to the challenge. And, and I think we like that a little bit in our, in our heroes as well. I think what best serves you if you want to reach more people and serve more people is you have to be very open to being vulnerable, but you also have to be quick to make light of it and also quick to say, and yet I'm still moving forward. I mean, if I, if I think about, if I think about the recipe of Chris Brogan, the recipe of Chris Brogan is saying, you know, I've got some ideas. I think I'm clever, but I'm not right. A lot of times I fail a lot. And I always say to people, Hey, let's try this thing and see if it works. And you all watch me. And sometimes I fail and other times I don't. And, and in either case, I show you what happens so that you can make some decisions and do some things with it. And I think that one reason people gravitate towards me is that I think they gravitate to me by, by seeing that I'm vulnerable enough to say, you know, well, that didn't work. And just go on to the next thing. And I, I think there's, I think there's some benefit in that. There's all these people who in their method of trying to lead want to look bulletproof. They want to look unstoppable, unflappable. And it either makes them look so disconnected from the people in the world, or it makes them look, you know, like we just feel like they don't even believe it. Uh, there, I was thinking about which kinds of comedians I like, and I, I love Mike Birbiglia. He is uh, very smart. He's very warm. He's great at self-deprecating humor. And I love Anthony Jeselnik. And Anthony Jeselnik's character, uh, which is different than saying who he is as a, as a human, you have to remember that all comedians have to br bring a character to the stage, even if the character is as based on yourself as it can be. Jeselnik's character is, is full of bravado. So he'll say things like, uh, I live in Los Angeles, like you wish you did and that sort of a thing. And he'll say, um, you know, that's the par perhaps the greatest opening joke ever in the history of comedy. And I think that, you know, you come to both of them for a very different thing. And, and it's fine for us to decide which version of us that we want to bring ourselves, you know, out there. But what's least fine is if we try to bring the most polished version of something that's not really us, you know, polish in itself of itself is not a bad thing, but really working hard on a persona that's not enough of us is a challenge. Like I said, Jesselnik, you know, comes off as arrogant, but that's part, that's part of the humor. Like the humor is the arrogance. You're, you're laughing at the fact that he's being absurdist about it. Um, and, and I think that, one challenge in challenging times is that we lose our ability to parse the subtlety. We lose our ability to understand what makes sense and what doesn't in that way. And I think it's, I think it's rough. And I think that the other opportunity that we have right now is we're not working as much as we are supposed to be. And we're not as out there as we have been is to really sort of rethink that packaging, right. And ask that question, what am I supposed to be putting forth here? What's, what's going to make it useful to other people? And how do I put my communications out there in a way that it smells and feels and looks like me and not like every other person communicating? You know, um, some of the, the great PR work that's going on right now during this quarantine has come from interesting places like Nike saying something like, you've always wanted to be, you know, a hero well, be the hero everybody needs by playing inside, you know, and, and they love the, you know, it's Nike's about sports, right? It's about athleticism. It's, it's about a predominantly outdoors world 
And they said, you know, right now what we need you most to do is play outside. My I play inside. My eyes are wicked itchy. I'm sorry about, you know, having to rub and scratch them. You can see they're kind of red. But I didn't do any good drugs to make them red. I just, they're red. But, you know, that's part of the package of Chris Brogan. Look how I stopped. I took a drink and that sort of a thing. It's part of the package of being me is I show you all the parts, you know, and, you know, there's other ways I could go about that. There's other things I could focus on that I could choose to take some of that detail away to make it a little easier to focus just on the message. But I feel like, and I could be wrong. And the few of you who are here live, feel free to you know chime in. I feel like that endears you a bit more that, that you go, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a regular person just like me. He drinks just like me. You know, I, I think that we want people to be bigger than us in some ways, but we really want to know that there's a path to our own bigness. I think we all want to know that what we offer is going to matter. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. I don't ever do it because I think I have a massive amount of amazing ideas. I, I just really want to connect and, and share my thoughts because I feel like we're all looking for just a little bit of guidance and I can, I could offer some and it's to be the best you that you really are and not to be some fake version. And it's to be the, the kind of person that is so strong because you are so open to the person that you really are. I, I think that's what we need to know today. I'll probably make a little video a little later on. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, always glad you're here. Anytime you want to talk to me, you can just drop me a line, chris at chrisbrogan.com or however you know how to reach me. I'm here for you. I'm your fan. I'll see you soon.